I'm Jackson. I'm Brecken. And we are Wide Receivers at Legend. And you're, you're listening, listening to, to Playmakers, Playmakers Corner. Corner. Yes, sir. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the Playmakers Corner podcast. I am your host for this interview, Cody Stoffer, and we actually are interviewing two elite pass catchers here out of one of the most talented offenses in the state of Colorado this past season. And if you guys would like to introduce yourself, where you're from, where you play football, the position that you play, and uh, your uh, class as well. Uh, how's it going? Uh, my name is Brecken Reeser. I'm from Parker, Colorado. I go to Legend High School and I play wide receiver where I used to play tight end. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, hi, my name is Jackson Brush. I am a athlete at Legend High School. Um, I'm from Parker, Colorado, and uh, I'm class of 2022 as well. Oh, yes, I am class of 2022. Perfect. Also, we've been saying your name wrong this entire time, uh, Brecken. We've been saying Riser this whole time, so it's Reeser. That's how it goes. Yeah, it's okay. commonly uh, mispronounced, but I don't okay. know. it's all good. The more you learn, right? Yeah. It's it's the in game that we talk about, but you know, just so that the audience kind of gets to know you guys, it doesn't matter what order you go in. But what is your favorite sports experience or memory while playing a sport? You know, this could be in the game of football, this could be in another sport, a specific play or a game in particular that stands out to you. Yeah. Um, I'll answer that one. I, without without question, it's got to be our Regis game from this year. That game was crazy. I have no idea how we won that game. I know we could have won that game, but yeah, that we was were, that we was a, that was a stupid good comeback. That was probably definitely the best moment for Shirley. We were <laughs> an down, exciting down, game for sure. Down Twenty-one. Yeah. And somehow, somehow we pulled it off. This kid went off. Jackson Brush went off. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, I guess. <laughs> Something to remember. Okay. And then, uh, kind of a side note, a little bit here. Uh, What's your favorite sport viewing experience? This could be a live event that you went to uh, as far as, you know, it could be any level, whether it's a high school, professional game, something like that. Or it could be something that you watched at home. You know, like for me, the Broncos winning the Super Bowl, uh, that's kind of hard to beat. So uh, if you guys want to talk about that as well, go ahead. Sports viewing moment. I'm honestly going to have to go with the, I don't know what year it was, but the college championship when Jalen Hurts got subbed out and Tua got subbed in and dotted up Devontae Smith in the end zone in overtime against Georgia. That was probably one of the coolest things I've seen, considering they're both in the league now. Um, for me, I'm a, I'm a diehard Ohio State fan. My dad went to Ohio State, so you got Buckeye and but Buckeye in our blood, so... Watching us win the 2014 national championship, that was uh, that was pretty sweet. Especially being so, I was like 10 when that happened. So, so it imprints it, right? <laughs> those are uh, those are both good memories. I remember watching the Alabama one specifically in my living room, and just you know, I was mad at Georgia for <laughs> for letting Bama back into the game. I was just at this point, you guys deserve to lose in overtime, and then they did. So you know, uh, that's that was my reaction from that game. And uh, you know, Ohio State—they've kind of always been my like lesser of two evils team for me. So uh, you know, I don't mind seeing them win every once in a while. But now that we kind of got a feel for y'all as fans and y'all as you know participants in the sport a little bit, uh, what was your guys' reaction to our evaluation? I know that we had some dialogue, you know. Uh, in the DMs, but you know, obviously being crowned as their fifth best tight end. I know that you converted to wide receiver, but you know, you contributed and really lowered your shoulder into some dudes uh, earlier in the season as well. And then Jackson, obviously being our number two receiver in this senior class, just kind of take us through your guys' reaction. You know, listening to the episode and you know being ranked in the top five of a uh, senior out of position. Um, for me, I uh, <clears throat> I was like I was really grateful to get the. Um, the the love from you guys like so uh, I was I was okay with the evaluation because I don't play tight end anymore there's a reason why I got switched and I'm I'm just not big enough for it I did what I could and like it's not like I didn't like put my heart out into it but I I completely agree with you guys that there are times where I cannot move anyone which being 180 pounds trying to move guys that are 50 pounds bigger than you 
it's tough, but I, th I feel like you guys uh, saw my receiving ability and, and my versatility, which they played me at a lot of different places. Like I was tight end, fullback, slot receiver, outside receiver. So I, I, I appreciated it. I thought it was good. For sure. For me, uh, I definitely appreciate just being on the list to start. Um, I do appreciate being number two as well. That was actually really cool to see. I just liked watching the video and just hearing five wasn't me, four wasn't me, three wasn't me. And then just being able to hear that my name was definitely potentially going to be in the top two. I was like, that's pretty sick. But uh, I think I think there was definitely way more love towards me than there was criticism, which I thought was really cool. And then when you guys did touch base on the criticism part, I thought I definitely needed to hear that. I definitely like to go a lot east-west more than north-south. But I think that's just because I'm five oh you got the you got the weight wrong too it's not 165 i'm like 153 oh wow yeah so even a bit lighter than uh than listed okay yeah and that's definitely... that's good to know for for this dialogue that's why we have you on the show yeah i was gonna text you all that but then you said i was gonna be on the show so i was gonna say it <laughs> i'm definitely five nine two not five ten <laughs> okay okay hey on on my roster, I tell them to round up to five ten when I'm five nine as well. So <laughs> it's always just good to say. I'm five ten in cleats to say the least. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the way to do it for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I had a great time watching both of your guys' film, and um, yeah, you guys were studs this year, and it, that was huge towards uh, you know obviously the success of the program. But you know, obviously you guys are doing this interview in the exact same room. And so I kind of wanted to touch up on that too a little bit and just think, you know, you guys are both graduating this year, both seniors, and uh, kind of wonder what your guys' like football journey kind of looked like. Did you guys meet through football? Were, your friend, were you guys friends before football? And then being good friends, how does that impact, you know, not only off the field stuff, but also your chemistry and like what you guys share on the field as well? Did we meet through football? Yeah, I think we did meet through football because we went to the same middle school and we weren't friends in middle school. And then we met freshman year and then we were the only two people to hang out with each other freshman year summer. And then it kind of just skyrocketed into a bunch of fun for the next four years, safe to say. Yeah, it was it was awesome. The the off the field stuff was off was awesome. But the on field stuff was it was unheard of because we just we had so much fun. We had a great position group and we were all like really close and for for all four years and yeah. we have great coaches coaches that are that are really cool so yeah it was, it was it was it was a lot of fun it was basically me brecken and our wide receivers coach and we all just kind of messed around the whole time our receivers coach was is like six years older than us <laughs> and he's basically our homie so it's basically getting coached by your friend so yeah it's awesome that's it's all it is fun. hey that sounds like a lot of fun and I, I know what it's like being uh, being a younger coach. I coached over at uh, Greeley West, you know, and, and that was when I was still in college. So I was like 20 years old yeah. coaching, you know, some of these 17 and 18 year olds. And it's like, no, no, like, like, trust me on this one. If you do this, then it'll work out better. And it's like a different kind of dialogue having a younger coach as opposed to older coaches. It's like, do this versus, you know, I feel like a lot of younger guys are like, hey, try this. And then you try and it's like, oh, maybe they're onto something. Yeah. So that's awesome. I'm glad you guys got to experience that and, you know, kind of had that journey, you know, as like friends through football and then hanging out after school, before school and whatnot. And I probably helped with you guys both perfecting your craft and like working out, having like a workout buddy of some kind. Right. Yeah, Definitely. for sure. Awesome. So now talking about you guys a little bit, let's talk about just how amazing this season was for you guys you guys had a lot to be proud of you know and i mean look legend as, as a whole 4666 yards of offense which is just absurd you know you guys had 59 touchdowns 28 receiving total so you know you guys were able to score in piles this year which we knew keeping track of you guys throughout the season just like whenever you guys flip that switch it was crazy uh, so I guess what are two to three qualities that separate Legends offense from other offenses around the state or even in the country, including your guys' position group? I mean, you kind of already touched on it with how young your receiver coach is, but what are some other things that kind of separated Legend from the rest this year? Our offensive coordinator is a certified genius. 
That guy has the best football certified. mind. Certified. Certified. Best football mind I've ever seen or ever listened to or whatever in my entire life. He was OC at Pitt, um, like Pittsburgh like University. University. <laughs> he coached Larry Fitzgerald, and then he was a head coach at like three D1 colleges as well. Yeah, he so. was head coach at Akron, which was his uh, FBS school. So yeah. he he was the greatest football mind I've ever. Yeah, so that's definitely one. Definitely. I feel like I feel like not a lot of people know that about about our. Yeah. I didn't. That's exciting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so much experience there. Yeah, he's a dog. <laughs> yeah, it's his. It's basically his staff working our offense. And then That's another the thing, thing, I'd say we just have a bunch of raw athletes. I think our offense is just is stupidly athletic. Like you have me, you have Brecken, and then you got Carter, our tight end, who could play receiver. I don't know a lot of high schools that have a Bryce Vaz in their backfield, so that's also pretty good. You will be hearing his name. It was mild spoiler alert for you guys, because this interview is going to come out after our top five senior running backs, but you will be hearing his name on that list. You guys oh, yeah. probably could have guessed that, but yeah, we, we know we I know could be number one. We'll see between one, two. We'll see. That kid should be number one. But yeah, we just have athletic offense, backfield, everything. Fullback's even good. And then what else we made go us good? Quarterback. We have to go. Yep, basically having Tom Brady at quarterback, Colton Warner. Shout out. Yeah, he's a great talent too and somebody that we're also going to be watching film of when we go to that uh, top five senior quarterbacks list. I mean, it just everything you guys did was just so monumental. I mean, you guys scored over 40 points basically every week this entire year. Uh, so... You know, and kind of transitioning into that a little bit, you know, you guys did face some pretty tough defenses this year. I got to be honest with you. I mean, look, you guys had that close game against Pine Creek. I know that they're classified as 4A, but they're going to be in 6A next year with all the rest of the big schools. You know, like yeah. they are a they are a powerhouse. You faced off against a Regis and their front seven is always terrifying. You know, they have some dogs in that linebacking core and on that D line that are crazy. You know, you guys faced off against an Arapaho, which is, you know, they, they were banged up, but, I mean, nonetheless, they were still well coached, you know. Uh, Got to put some respect on my alma mater there. Uh, Coach New, he's a defensive guy, and, you know, their D-line usually brings it. And I know that, you know, a, a D-line that gets a push, that impacts you guys and the routes that you run in the game plan that week. And then, obviously, you know, you guys had a chance to take your shot at the uh, champs this year in Cherry Creek. So what was it like kind of preparing against, you know, those really tough defenses this year and, uh, you know, facing off against them, against, you know, talent that, you know, will will be on the Division One level from each of these schools. I think definitely you could just tell Pratt the week prior to the big games like Regis and Pine Creek, the vibe was just completely different. Everyone was just way more locked in and you knew it was a big deal and you could tell that it was a big game that was coming up. So we definitely switched into that second gear for those games and it, I think it definitely really helped. We played uh, Westminster the week before Pine Creek, and we were preparing for Pine Creek. Like, they didn't tell us we were preparing for Pine Creek, but we were preparing for Pine Creek. Yeah, we put a lot of prep into the big games, and it definitely paid off. So, we like, got... flipping a switch into a business mode, basically. Exactly. Uh, when we played uh, Regis, Regis's their front seven was... Like like you said, it was scary. We couldn't really run on them at all. Like we had to, we had to pass, which we did pass. We passed for like 400 something yards. Yeah, Colton had 422 yards on only 13 completions. So yeah, we 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 had to make some big plays, and we did. Yeah, their front seven was nuts. Definitely, I think the bigger games we definitely did prepare our air attack more. So we were definitely a ground running team, but for those big games going into it, we'd always say, yeah, we're gonna have to pass the ball this game. And knowing we can do that, and knowing we can come out in games like that and just pass the ball, it helps a lot. Uh, against Arapaho, it was definitely, it was definitely nice that w at number eight wasn't playing. What's his name? I don't know. His name. I don't Jackson know. Jackson Adams. Yes. Yeah, that no, kid's a beast. We, yeah, we were very fortunate he wasn't playing, but I still think we would have same result. But when a three star isn't playing, it's definitely like that's yeah. Too that's to your advantage. They're still they're they're still good. We uh we we went we came out we started off really fast against them. Yeah. And then we got conservative, but 
that's that's how that's how legend is i mean we have very smart coaches they know what what they're doing so yeah yeah and then we don't have to talk about cherry creek no no their season their, it speaks for itself like fair enough so i guess uh you know you guys put a lot of respect on your coaching staff and i love hearing that, that philosophy of like i i want to be a running team but we can pass when we need to and we could pass pretty dang good that's kind of the philosophy that i love personally uh, you know, I, I love getting kind of creative in the ground game and stuff like that. So hearing, you know, that kind of influence, obviously from the OC that you guys talked about and the coaches, you know, being very well prepared and just overall as a program, you guys have a lot going for you. And I guess kind of how has football or athletics at legend impacted what you prioritize from, you know, potentially a program on the next level or even from a school, you know, because, you know, it, it's one thing on the football field, but it's another thing how they handle stuff in the classroom and impact how you do on the field or just in your general life. Um, I, I like the school personally. I mean, I have a, I have a good time there. There's, there's, I feel like most people get treated pretty it's good. It's just a high school. It's a, yeah, it's just a high <laughs> like, school. I guess that's all there is to it. You go to school, get done at 1130, practice, <laughs> same thing, different day. Yeah, the, the senior life at Legend is very nice. You can, if you use your your periods correctly, you'll you're off by 11, and it's yeah, that's great. It's pretty. Hey, we got some we got some good influences in that senior class, or at least you're trying to help out the the next class, and we'll touch on that a little bit later for sure. But uh, kind of transitioning a little bit. Uh, sorry to kind of butt you out for just a second, Brecken, but uh. I'm going to go to Jackson here and kind of ask you, um, you know, you participated on Team Full Gorilla, and I guess, how did that kind of prepare you for the season, and what was your experience like on Team Full Gorilla? I mean, shoot, four of the cornerbacks from our top defensive backs list were Team Full Gorilla guys that I'm sure you got to rep against, you know, like Jaden Allen and Curtis Samuel out there at Bound for Carson, Dante Capolongo, Caden Rulo. Did you get a chance to rep against those guys, and how did that impact this season? I repped against Jaden Allen more than I've any repped against anybody on Team Full Gorilla. The kid's a beast too. Can't clamp me, but he's good. <laughs> he's good, but yeah, those Team Full Gorilla, Team Full Gorilla is for surely one of the best programs I've played for outside of high school, I guess. Like any sport, it's like super fun. All the coaches are pretty good, and they all connect with the player individually very well. And I suggest that anybody listening to this should definitely try out for Team Full Gorilla. And it's just, it's really good football. It's the top football you're going to get in the state, in my opinion. And it's just it's a bunch of dogs competing. That's all it is. It's good. Sweet deal. Good little plug and, uh, you know, a good shout out. You know, uh, Jaden, uh, I actually just got done interviewing uh, him and Curtis uh, earlier. So, you know, he's like, yeah, Team Full Gorilla, that definitely pushed me a little bit. And so... Uh, it's funny to hear you talk about uh, Jaden because he even said it himself. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely like the chatterbox as far as like secondary guys go. So oh, yeah. that that's good practice for you as well. Just uh, d- cornerbacks doing cornerback things, you know. <laughs> I love but I guess, you know, kind of transitioning a little bit, looking at that next chapter, right? Uh, for I reckon I don't know if you're interested on playing at the next level. I guess I haven't really asked you. Are you looking to play football on the next level? And you, Jackson, I know that you have a couple of offers. Yeah, honestly, I'm not really like looking at it. I think I'm just going to go to CU or CSU next year. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to miss it for sure. But I, I, didn't, I haven't really, I didn't really put myself out there. I don't think in recruiting like I could have. So. Um, I definitely want to play college football for surely, but I mean, everyone wants to get D1 offers and all that, but I have none of that right now. So I think my best option is probably, probably just go Juco, to be honest. You never know what's going to happen there. Get bigger, maybe taller, play two years transfer with the transfer portal rules these days. It's nuts. So you never know. Oh, for sure. Football as long as I can. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Juco, that's a route that, you know, we've tried to educate a lot of these younger guys on because, I mean, let's uh, we're, we're having a serious conversation here. Right. Colorado, yeah. as much as it should be regarded as a football state, really isn't looked at on a national scale as a football state, which is a shame. And, you oh, know, that's what we're trying to change here at Playmakers Corner is like, look, even 
even guys who play casually, you know, they're still dogs here. And we play a mile above everyone else. We have less oxygen to work with, and we're still putting up these crazy numbers, and we're putting out these crazy athletes and whatnot. So, you know, that's something to obviously discuss. And, you know, JUCO is a route that a lot of Colorado guys have to go, and it's a very valuable route, I think, you know. Uh, we have one guy out in Garden City, you know, obviously Luke McAllister, he did that like one kind of year at Hutch. He was our number one quarterback of the senior class last year. And, you know, he's right back to getting D1 kind of looks, even without taking, you know, snaps in a game, uh, just because it kind of does help, you know, refine things, get a couple more connections as well. Because a lot of those Juco guys, you know, they coached in the NFL. They coached at Division One programs. And now they're trying to bring that expertise to that level and, you know, help build those bridges for those JUCO guys. So I think that's a very valuable route. And uh, I guess, Breck and I, I'm going to be right back with you because we haven't had a chance to interview someone who's not looking at the next level. So I kind of want to hear your take on your football journey in just a second. But uh, Jackson, just real quick, I guess, what kind of tools have been at your disposal uh, with the recruiting process? You know, I know that uh, Team Full Gorilla, they're always putting you on, but I guess like in what ways has the coaching staff kind of been able to provide support or are there any other resources that have helped kind of, you know, uh, educate you on the recruiting process and whatnot? Do you mean my high school coaches or team full gorilla coaches? Uh, yes to both. Okay. Uh, well, our offense coordinator definitely has connections over a lot of places. So I definitely have just sent him my film and have him do what he can with it. Um, I got Dave Logan's number from Cherry Creek. He came and talked to me before the game, so I definitely had to take full advantage of that. And then, other than that, put your huddle together, go on Safari, search up the school you want to go to, and then search up their football staff, find the email, and just Josh Allen that thing and 1,000 emails to colleges all over the country. It's a lot of it's a lot of work on your own, to be honest. You gotta you gotta want it to play football, so you just gotta work for it, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, with COVID and everything, too, it's kind of backed up the recruiting process quite a bit for a lot of different people. A lot of schools just don't have the scholarships. So you really have to put in extra, extra work, uh, especially these days to get that recruiting done. So, you know, I appreciate that advice and kind of uh, tools that you talked about here. And like you said, taking advantage of those connections, you know, uh, talking about the Dave Logan thing, it's like, hey, you know, even though I'm facing off against this guy in the coming days, like, you know, he's still a valuable asset who, I mean, who else to better know your game than the guy who is setting up a game plan to try and stop you, right? So, right. you know, just like at the end of the day, you know, whatever happens inside the field of football is one thing, but, you know, don't burn any bridges or anything like that as far, because at the end of the day, everyone's playing football, everyone's coaching football, and that's what it's about. But kind of transitioning over to Breck and I can kind of sympathize with your story a little bit more seeing as how, you know, I wasn't getting actively recruited. And I wasn't really trying to get actively recruited out of high school. What has football meant to you, you know, as far as how long have you been playing it and what kind of lessons have you been able to learn and stuff like that? Um, Football is pretty much everything to me. Like even now I still think about football like nonstop. Like it's kind of it's kind of sad honestly like how much I'm I'm like looking back at it and like I just miss it but like I, I appreciate it as what it like I, I enjoyed the moment like especially like, the senior year like I I knew it was gonna be like my last one so I just I enjoyed it a lot like that's what I had to do so I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna miss it a lot. Um, I'm not, I, I'm just not interested at all at playing at the next level. Like, it's just, it seems like it's too much of a grind for me, which, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't like it when it's like my whole day is like revolved around it. So it's just, I, I wouldn't like it as much. And it's, there's nothing better than high school football. That's the best that there is. So. Hey, that's, a, that's a fun take. And, you know, I think that it's it's good that you had that awareness of you know this is going to be my last year and you were able to almost kind of take a step back a lot of the time and see it you know for what it was as that you know how am i going to look at this for the rest of my life and whatnot and i guess you know kind of talking about that because 
there's a lot of kids who who won't play football at the next level, whether they don't want to or whether they, you know, or whether they can't. Uh, just depending, you know, there's there's a lot of stories going on uh, as far as you know opportunities not being there. So I guess what kind of things can you take from football into you know your college applications even or you know whether it's your studies i mean football is a lot better for a lot of things outside of the gridiron you know so i guess kind of talk to us about the things that are going to go beyond the field for you from the game of football um to be honest with you in my college application it is football that's what it was about like it was about like something that my our offensive coordinator said that was like very inspiring which i mean that doesn't usually happen because I mean, it was like it's because it's just you're all like you're all you're all grown men there. It's kind of like you know, but like in that moment, like it's it was it was crazy. So I just had to write about that because that was the only thing I could write about. Um, it was it was not not even like the high school thing. Like just going back in middle school too, because I started in sixth grade. It was so fun, like. There's nothing better than those middle school football days. Wear your jersey to your Hawks jersey to middle school. That's what everyone would do. For yeah. sure. It was awesome. I'll miss it a lot. Hey, uh, and, and I appreciate the sentiment of that. You know, I still talk to guys from my middle school football team, even, you know, whether they continued playing football in college or, you know, like me, they, they graduated college and they're trying to work on that next chapter of their life. Either way, you know, um those those things those friendships and memories can last a lifetime so i gotta agree with that and uh you know you you bringing up the uh parker hawks jersey uh kind of reminded me of uh of another question i have that i kind of spaced out on but who are some guys to look out for this next year at legend you know whether it's uh juniors that are going to be stepping into senior roles or you know some freshmen even that can make a big impact the for the next few years at legend gavin's good Gavin Taylor's good. He's big. He's strong. He'll he can affect the oh. the run game real well. Our receiver, um, my our backup receiver, his name's Brian Doyle. He's fast as he's he's definitely got to be one of the fastest kids in his grade. He's gonna be a junior, so he's pretty good. Um, there's a lot of sophomore talent, a lot of junior talent on the team. So, yeah, well, I think we're gonna be. We're gonna be fine. The coaching staff will. I mean, we didn't all start before this year, so. I started junior year. Okay, well, you did. All right, let's jump right back into this. Um, you know, now that we're uh, getting towards the end of this interview, you know, we here at Playmakers Corner realize that it takes a lot to, you know, find success on the high school level and find drive and whatnot. So we just want to give you guys some time to shout out anybody who's been important to your academic or athletic career this could be friends family past coaches current coaches uh or or teammates anything like that the floor is your guys take as much time as you need to just shout out everyone who's been important to your athletic career first of all we both want to shout out monty thielen yeah shout, shout out monty shout out monty. monty legendary head coach that's our boy he's the goat for surely uh, shout out Danny DiPietro, oh, our of course our wide receivers coach. Danny DiPietro, he, he'll definitely listen to this. He he was awesome to us. He was we we would always mess with him though. It was a, it was a great time. Yeah, love that guy. He made football fun. Um, shout out. I'm gonna just shout out my dad. He'll definitely hear this, so I'm gonna shout him out. And uh, that guy's been my coach since I could walk for everything up until like seventh grade. So he definitely turned me into the athlete I am today. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. I, I want to give props to my mom and my dad. <laughs> and, but I just want to do it all at once. You know, I want to get out of the way. Shut up. Uh, shout out my mom and dad. They're uh, they've been they've been great. They've supported me throughout the whole the whole thing. Even when I didn't want to play football when I was younger. So they they've been with me the, through the whole journey. So shout out. Yeah, I mean, who else? Oh, my little brother. He's pretty cool. Shout out him. And um, then... Shout out Jack Wolpe. <laughs> Why are we shouting out Jack Wolpe? He's, he's, my, he's one of my favorite sophomores. That's true. Shout yeah. out Jack Wolpe. And Jeff. Yeah, shout out Jeff Baca. Yep. All right, who else? Um, 
I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I got them anymore. Shout out! Shout out! Uh, Daddy's pumpkin munchkins. If you know, you know. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um. Oh, shout out Bam Bam. We have to shout out Bam yeah. Bam. Bam right. Bam. We're just going on. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's think, definitely it. I think. That's oh wait, I do have to thanks mom. Thank you mom. Okay. <laughs> Aaron Ben now. Oh, almost got in trouble with your mom there. Last second <laughs> save. <laughs> Uh, that was your best catch of the season. Forget forget the the one-handed tips and bobbles and the strong hands. That was your best catch of the season right there. My mom's a good. <laughs> My mom's a good. It's a great catch. But uh, all right, cool beans. So so that has been the interview here with these legend receivers. And, you know, I just got to give him a shout out. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. You guys have been spectacular this season. And congratulations to Legend on a phenomenal and even legendary season there. And, you know, in order to find more on this interview, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're also going to post a preview of this on TikTok as well, where, you know, these guys will both have TikToks made. So you can watch those TikToks there or on Instagram. We're also going to start trying to post things on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us there. You're obviously listening to us on some podcast form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Anchor. Make sure to leave us a good review if possible and follow us or subscribe. So that way you can you know get the latest updates whenever we release new episodes we're gonna have plenty more interviews for you guys please make sure to check out the top five episodes the tight end episode that features brecken and the top five wide receiver episode that features jackson for full breakdowns on their games but i have been your host cody stoffer and thank you so much for joining